Woo. What's up everyone? Out here fishing. So I know a lot of you probably don't have boats or float tubes, kayaks, and you're just stuck to shore fishing. So today I thought I'd make a video on how I shore fish from Pyramid. I know right now it's late winter, you know, it's mid-January right now, and essentially what's really working is indicator fishing with midges. I don't know if you can see that. That's what they're using. Little little midges like that below an indicator. And you just watch the bobber all day. And I like I said, this is highly effective out here, but I just don't I don't see the enjoyment out of midge fishing. I'm sorry. I really don't. I like to be interactive with the rod keeps me a little bit warmer and uh, being able to work those patterns back swap them out it's just fun but yeah these are these are all various little I don't have a huge selection of midges because I just don't do it very much but that's what they are just these midge patterns these are stone flies for the river but just midges in general a lot of times what they'll do with those indicators and they'll have a midge, right? They'll put on one of these at the very bottom. So you have your indicator at the top with your long leader, depending on where you're fishing and how deep you wanna go, you, your leader could be anywhere from four feet from the indicator all the way to 12, 13, 14 feet of leader. And what they'll do is they'll put with it a balance leech. This is a balance leech, it gets tied right here and essentially this will be your weight at the bottom and then they'll have a midge you know however far you want to go maybe I wouldn't do very far maybe three feet at the most so you'll have your midge in the center your indicator at the top this at the bottom so when that indicator moves from the waves or the little ripple that's on the water this will kind of move up and down and a lot of times the fish will bite the balance leech but they'll also hit the midges and that's super effective out here as well. So I'm not a huge indicator fishing fan because I think it's just kind of boring just watching a bobber go up and down. However, it is a very effective method and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can show you a lot better than how I could show you. But what I like to do is use a full sink line just like you've seen in all my other videos when I'm on the float tube, you know, fishing for trout, bass, you name it. I'm always using a full sink line. Today I have a standard full sink of three inch per second. I think right now that's gonna be ideal from shore because it's not gonna sink too fast, but it's just gonna keep me right in that correct strike zone where those fish might be lurking. And I'm just gonna fish these drops. Um, I'm out here just a little bit before Cattle Guard. So I'm on the south end of the lake near Popcorn if any of you wanna kinda check it out. But I think the fish are gonna be relatively close into shore right now in regards to how active they are and where they're swimming and where they're kind of residing because they are eating majority bugs right now. I am gonna just be using my standard little leech pattern that Jason and I tie up. Sometimes what I like to do is I throw a double fly on when I'm stripping back and forth from spot to spot, but I'll do my leech pattern, the trusty old secret leech pattern, and then I'll trail, a, it's called a popcorn beetle at the very end of it and what happens is it kind of floats and when you strip it down it'll kind of go down and then it'll float up and it'll just make that motion in the water column and I don't know the trout out here love these popcorn beetles hence the name popcorn point over there where the south end boat launch is someone designed that beetle and the fish just love it out here so popcorn beetle right there classic white with lime green or they make these darker ones too like that but this one's been kind of worked quite a bit so just got to get out here and try it out yourself so that's all I can tell you woolly boogers work good too if you're stripping woolly boogers back in what's full sink line the fish is hungry they're gonna eat it because it is highly effective and I just like to strip back and forth move spots and fish these drop-offs so hopefully I can get some on board well hopefully I can get some on shore and show you what that's like but I thought this would my 
be a pretty nice video for everyone that is just shore fishing out here. And this is utilized in any other lake that you want to try it out on. Always fish those littoral zones that have good structure. You know, what I mean by good structure is if you look at the shoreline over here, there's a lot of rocks and you know, there's probably a nice big sandy shoal out there that the fish are gonna be kind of moving through and just looking for those bugs. But essentially, if you can see it on the GoPro, hopefully you can. I'm gonna get the drone up in a little bit so I could kind of show you in, on the drone how these banks are set up out here at Pyramid. And almost every single beach has drop-offs. It just depends on how far that drop-off is. Somewhere by a gate, it's dark. Baby, they ain't never gonna find me. I'm a renegade. Oh. I could be the one who saved you from this our place. We could be as one and we'll escape. We could run away, we don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns inside. Take away the pain, we can go insane. I can feel it, it burns. A lot of people use ladders out here. Uh, essentially, I could have brought a ladder and used that, but like I said, I wanted this video to be short and simple in regards to supplies you will need to bring if you do want to try to short fish from Pyramid. So a good six weight rod is very crucial. Full sink line if you wanted to do that route, or you're gonna be needing a floating line and an indicator if you wanna go that route. So let me just break it down to you what my setup is. I do have all lamps and reels. So I have the lamps in liquid. And I do have three sets of sinking lines that I like to use on this six weight rod. I have an intermediate, a three weight, or I have an intermediate, a three inch, a five inch, and even a seven inch per second on this six weight. And I don't typically use the seven inch per second unless I'm float tubing deep water because it just sinks way too fast. With these lamps and reels, they're super simple. So what you do is you just gotta push on the back part of the spool and it just comes right out. And like I said, this was my three inch per second full sink line. And I have my five and my seven inch per second sinking line right in there. And it has a nice little traveling case as well. And it's just ready to go for next time. One thing that you should always do after you fish pyramid is rinse off your gear because that alkaline in the water just really makes it tough on your equipment because it's just I wouldn't say it's corrosive, but it's like fishing in salt water. You know, it's just it'll eat through your gear. But there's a lot of alkali in the water. Not salt, but it is full of alkali. Like I was telling you earlier, I do have a six weight fly rod made by Reddington. It's a vice, so it's relatively inexpensive in regards to how expensive fly rods can get. So if you're looking for a nice little cheap rod, Reddington vice is a definitely a good choice for you. The Reddington vice six weight rod it's a nine foot and it's a four piece so it breaks down super simple just boom 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 that's all you got it comes with this nice little traveling case so your rod doesn't get all banged up for the money it's a nice rod you don't really can't really ask for much better performance with a more reasonable rod because Reddington makes pretty good stuff. And then you're not spending a bunch of money on a really expensive sage rod or one of those high dollar Orvis rods. You just get it done with a six weight. The six weight definitely helps out when you're trying to cast all day. Now if you're indicator fishing, 
I mean, if you want, you could use an eight weight, but I really don't think you need it out here. But put a comment and let me know if you really think it's worth it to have an eight weight rod out here, but I just don't think it's necessary. I know a lot of people are gonna be probably putting comments in there. Why don't you fish an eight weight? You're at Pyramid. You don't need an eight weight out here. You can do just fine with a six weight because a six weight can handle some pretty big fish. However, a six weight is a lot easier to cast all day too. An eight weight gets really heavy. I do have an eight weight that I like to use for bigger fish like stripers and really big large mouths because they pull like tugboats, but typically you can get it done with a six weight. So I know it's a little overwhelming when you go into a fly shop and you're like, oh my God, what is all these fly rods and what are all these different numbers? Just stick to as simple as possible when you're first starting out or if you just want to get a new setup, Reddington Vice is definitely a way to go. So let's get to fishing. Hopefully I can get some and we'll see what happens. So what I'm doing is I cast out <clears throat> and most effective thing to do is work the ledges, like I said. You need to be working those drop-offs because if you're not, that's where typically all the fish like to hang out that are feeding. They're just cruising those ledges. And I like, oop, that's a snag. So that's the one downfall about fishing like this is if it's rocky out there, you know, you're gonna be getting snagged up. So if you are gonna be stripping, it is a little bit more effective to try to find a spot that's a little bit more sandy because then you won't be getting all snagged up like this. Got it out. Woo. Get it all done. And so like I was saying, the three inch per second is gonna keep it relatively close to the water or the bottom. And I'm all I'm gonna do is cast out there as far as I can really and I'm gonna try to count at least 15 seconds or so to let that fly fully sink now if they're not biting on the bottom it's always beneficial to kind of mix up your depths on where you're fishing like right now I cast it out and I'm just gonna kind of strip and work that fly through the middle of the water column because I know for a fact it's kind of rocky out there and I don't really want to get snagged all the time so I'm just going to kind of work different depths and different strip technique whether it be a fast strip or you you know want to do a couple quick ones and then pause it for a sec you just got to kind of mix it up until you hone in on what really works for those fish that day but in all reality you're just kind of hoping that the fish are going to cruise right in front of you you can move spots which might be beneficial on slow days definitely just keep working different spots until you get into those fish because they do like to move all the time if you have any specific questions just leave a comment and i will answer for you to the best of my ability of course and then we'll see what happens after that Coffee break, so cheers. It's chilly out here. Been fishing for about an hour or so, hour and a half. No bites or nothing. It's pretty typical when you're fishing out here at Pyramid, you just never know what's gonna happen. Especially if you're not out here all the time like I am. This gets a little bit too expensive for my liking. Plus, there's so many other great waters that you can go fish right now. Like I tried to ice fish yesterday with a couple buddies. All right, well, we're either the stupidest people alive or we're gonna catch a 30 pounder. Diesel, come here. No shoes for the win. <laughs> come here, get back here. Follow me. Hey, come here. Oh, we're riding that bitch later. 
<laughs> That'll be fun, dude. We yeah, got it. Is. We got it. Woo, what is up, everyone? Well, there's about five feet of slushy snow before we get to the ice. And then after that, we don't even know what's going on. So we're gonna go check a different lake to see if the snow pack's a little bit thinner over there. Just keep bopping around. But we anticipated this and it beats being at the house. Just way too much snow. We have been getting pounded with so much snow, which is great because it's gonna help out the fishing in the summertime. But lo and behold, it doesn't make for a very nice adventure for ice fishing so check it out real quick one thing that helps out when you're fly fishing that i forgot today it's a pair of nitrile gloves keep your little fingers from getting all wet because when you're working that fly line through your fingers it does get cold so i'm having to take breaks here and there to warm up my phalanges but i'm having fun and that's all you can ask for especially a day like today nice bluebird skies no w word and just nice to get out here so if you have high expectations of you're just gonna catch 42 10 pound trout out at pyramid i'm sorry you might get lucky and get a couple or get one at least but the joy of it is just being out here and enjoy the fishing now i'll dive into a little bit of what you can do if you're going to be spin fishing if you're going to be spin fishing you're gonna wanna work the bank just like you would if you're fly fishing, so work those drop-offs. Find the crucial areas of where you think the fish are gonna be holding. And what really works effectively is RHA tackle spoons. So check them out. They're at Mark Ford Strike here in Reno, or you can buy them straight online off of his website. But RHA Tackle has some awesome handcrafted spoons so if you haven't checked them out please do i'm going to be putting a link in the description and i'll show you a few when i get back home but rha tackle spoons work awesome as well as a lot of people have been getting out here and working hookup baits too so if you haven't checked out hookup baits those have been working pretty effectively from shore or jigging from a boat and that's what i use up in tahoe so they are proven good baits always have a diverse selection of equipment when you're coming out here but fishing's fishing so if you get one you get one right they didn't want it to be called fishing they call it catching if you're just gonna catch fish all day and what's the fun of that so i'm gonna get back at it hopefully i can get a few if not i just want one just to show you that this is a proven way to catch fish out here but if you don't believe me because I'm not catching fish that's your own problem because I have caught fish like this a lot of the times this is how I was taught out here with my good buddy Brandon and my buddy Jason and you just gotta keep trying and keep grinding so we'll get back after it let my hands warm up a little bit first staring at the stars Some gates never get to open cause it's too late I could be the one who saves you from this place Baby, they ain't never gonna find 
Still trying to get warm but one thing I could recommend that if you are gonna come shore fishing out here you are gonna need waders because you like you just saw I was out there wading pretty deep it is pretty chilly this time of year and really any time of year when you're standing in the water like that it's gonna eventually chill you to the bone however that's why everyone uses ladders out here not only to be able to fish those ledges a little bit more efficiently but to keep them up and out of the water you can get by with one of those three step step ladders that you use in you know kitchens kitchens or offices however you know you can go all the way up to a six or eight foot ladder it just depends or you can even get it as extravagant as those guys that fully build out a ladder with a platform and a chair but that, then you're just getting really pricey at that point so I think your best bet if you want to keep it cheap and simple just get one of those small little step ladders at least it gets you up and out of the water and you'll stay a little bit warmer hopefully some beaches you will find that the drop is super close and all you have to do is stand in ankle deep water and you have a huge ledge that you can fish but I'm just not at one of those beaches Spider Point is a really good example that you don't really need a ladder or a step ladder there and it's very very good for spin fishermen because you don't really need that big long backdrop for a back cast on your fly rod. When you are fly fishing you kind of need that room behind you to be able to make longer casts else you'll be hooking bushes or rocks or whatever is behind you if you don't have enough room so just keep that in mind if you're trying to pick a beach to fish at if you are fly fishing but with a spin rod you can kind of fish anywhere you want really it is going to depend seasonally on what area you, you kind of want to fish like right now shore fishing is probably pretty good all around the lake however once it becomes more prone to springtime and the spawn starts to kick off and these fish kind of get in a little bit more shallow and they look for you know the Truckee River Inlet of course because that's where, historically where these native trout would like to spawn however they ha do have trouble spawning in the Truckee River and that's why Marble Bluff Fish Hatchery is down there to capture all these huge cutthroats so they can use it and pass the genetics on through a hatchery and then restock the lake because that's how Pyramid Lake survives is via hatchery lo and behold but if you are going to be fishing the spring spawn uh, I would definitely try the south nets popcorn but if you are going to fish the south nets you are going to need a ladder preferably a little bit taller one because that ledge like kind of here is a little bit farther out and you want that higher platform to stand on so you can actually make those longer casts as well as stay warm so tip of advice bring a ladder if you are going to be shore fishing because it just makes it a lot easier and don't forget your waders neoprene waders that you see duck hunters use or any type of neoprene wader with a boot really is probably the most efficient wader out here especially if you're just gonna be standing in the water because they are thicker and they will keep you a little bit warmer than these thinner waders because these are more of my summertime waders but 
my neoprene waders that I wear duck hunting have a hole in them, so that would not have been good out here. But you just gotta go with the punches, and we'll try to get some more fishing in, but my hands are pretty cold right now, so I'm just gonna continue to warm them up, drink some coffee, and we'll see in a bit. But don't forget, if you've made it this far in the video, you probably watch a lot of my stuff. But remember, I'm a fully licensed guide for Nevada, not out here. So don't ask me to take you out to Pyramid because I don't have my guide license for Pyramid Lake. But I do have my guide license for Nevada. So if you want to go on the Truckee, any other river out in Nevada, you want to see the East Walker down by, you know, close to Bridgeport. I love fishing over there. You can get into a lot of trout on the river, but it is a little bit of a drive. However, I'll, I'll take anybody who wants to go down there. But I am up in Tahoe most of the time during the summer catching Mackinac and Kokanee. So if you want to get on the boat and check it out, see what it's all about, I'll teach you how to fish from Mackinac and we'll get some on board and get some tasty Kokanee for you. But until next time, always just remember to have fun out here. You'll like it. You'll enjoy it. No matter where you're fishing, just enjoy the day because you just never know. Life's crazy. Life's too short to be pissed off if you're not catching fish because the real catch is being out here and enjoying it. So that's all I got for you. Hopefully you like this video. Hopefully it helps out. If you do, comment, like, or subscribe to the channel. It just really supports me and it gives me more enjoyment for making these videos and I'll, I'll keep at it for you. So until next time, we'll catch you later, everyone. Thank you.